Hello everyone, welcome back to more Seduce Me Baby. Oh yeah, keep on seducing me, just can't get enough. Alright, well today's episode is going to be a little bit different. As you all know in the uh, last episode, we finished Damien's route, all the incubi have been done, they are completed. So now it's on to the other routes, the more interesting routes. Or at least interesting compared to what we've been rinse, wash, and repeating the other times, anyway. And today, we shall be going through Andrew's route. <sighs> alright, alright, alright. All right. For reals, though, I have a confession to make. I've been shitting on this poor man this whole entire time, but the reality is, I actually don't remember much about his gameplay. I really don't remember. He was literally the last route I went through. And all I remember was, after I was finished, I said, Wow, this route was so stupid. I can't believe they actually edited it in here. It was really, really dumb. So that's all I remember. I actually don't remember anything else. I probably should have looked up a guide to make sure I'm doing everything right, but I'm sure it'll be fine in this first episode. If not, then I'll, I guess I'll just edit it and correct it, <laughs> if need be. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, as we have, as I have mentioned in the past videos, meeting up Andrew, all your choices before then do not matter. You, you could be nice, you could be mean. So you know what? Let's just breeze through this, get th introduce ourselves to all the demons, and then just head straight to the party where we meet the new love of our life. Andrew. Sam! Fuck you, Sam. No! Damien! Fuck you, Damien. Matthew! Fuck you, Matthew. What? James! Fuck you, James. And Derek. No, no, no fuck you, Derek. Seriously. You're like the only reason why I keep coming back to this game, I swear to God. So be cool. Be cool. Just be fucking cool. Always be cool to your bae, okay? Always be cool to your bae. These are laws that need to be obeyed. Now on to the party. All right, here we are at the party. Finally, about goddamn time. So here's a mama. Suddenly though, my mom pushes her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I don't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Oh, cool. With my mother's stood a man who looked only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held out his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Oh, and the place your hand in his. The pleasure's all mine, boy! So I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. <laughs> I couldn't do it without those, uh, five guys over on the side, you know? <laughs> uh, thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> really? Damn, a badass! I don't need to go to work to make shit work! Hell yeah! Wow, I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I wasn't able to find out. Because somebody had to ruin it! Yep, our asshole dad. Thank you, dad, for fucking everything over. I felt someone walk up behind me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. 
It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break it the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well... I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. What the fuck, man? David, leave the poor boy alone. Yeah, Mom, tell him. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. I love Mom's face right here. Just, for fuck's sake, honey, just shut up! Ugh! Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. Well, he is in a big fancy mansion. I, I imagine you need to have some politeness. Jeez. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. And well, for the first time and only time, we're gonna follow him. Andrew, wait! Come back! Come back! I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was alright. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. My dad is such a fucking asshole. Andrew, you would just not believe what kind of man that guy is. Ugh. We wound up outside. The stars practically danced on the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been my first time in years being out there, but my thoughts were on the nostalgia. Hey, Andrew? Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt terrible. Oh. I, um, I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, for the way my dad behaved. He shouldn't have been so... Oh, no. No, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing, seeing Andrew's professional slide, and then seeing a goofy smile away from everyone. Still, I'm really sorry about that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. Aww. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Mika. My name is Mika. I under in understanding, his smile returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. Nah, it's not that nice. It's kind of lame if you think about it. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? Uh, a lot of people, actually. Uh, I'm sure a lot more than Mika, if you ask me, but whatever. Yeah, a lot of people do. See? This game knows exactly what it's going to say. But how about Axel or Ace? Something cool like that. Ah, you want a cool name, not a subtle name. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be a vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Whether it was the most non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt... nice. Lewis. Oh my god, Dad, shut the fuck up! And just like that, the feeling had vanished. We both turned to see my dad at the doors of the mansion, staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain a business posture. Yes, sir? Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home. Now. Oh my god, dad, please. Oh, alright. Thank you, sir. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad? I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with him. Well, what, what if I don't want the company, huh, Dad? Huh? What if I don't want it? What if I don't want it? This is not my dream. It was Dad. It was my grandfather's dream. And maybe it was your dream, but maybe it's not mine. Have you thought of that? Huh? Huh? Dad, you suck. Before I could retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was near and ending. I sighed and entered the house as well, wanting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, and my parents and the incubi were left. My dad slowly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared at him and a wave of confusion washing over my face. What now? God, man! You did good tonight. I'm proud. Good for you. Now shut the fuck up and go home. Oh, th thank you, Dad. Keep it up and you'll be a good CEO. Uh, 
There's always a catch. Right. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. I'm a grown-ass woman. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Shut up, Dad. Right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. Even though I betted you guys, but... Yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. Alright? Sure. Sounds good. Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do, Mom. Just make sure you keep Dad in check. Tell him to just fucking piss off. God. All four of my remaining guests left the building, all of my, but my dad waving back to me. With the last of the guests gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Whew. Well, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Ha ha ha. Fuck you, Sam. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. Exactly. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Ugh. Oh, shut up, Sam. It's a little bit of work. You never killed anybody. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ears. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. I don't know why I'm talking don't like this. Worry. I'm just trying something different. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads towards the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung, swung open, revealing a sight I would never have expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine, roughened up clothes and a pistol in his hand, I saw a monster. I covered my mouth to not scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the bandana around his neck as he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? Actually, we'd all, all hoped you'd get lost somewhere. Pro probably playing traffic, too. I hoped you would, you piece of- All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over in aggravation. Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after its first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall in a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into a black flame that disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix. That was his name. His existence resonated in my memory for the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by... Magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protected barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables Hellborn magic. Melix's face grew to that extreme anger, his fist tightening as if he was crushing a stress ball. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took that chance to stand up to him instead of being powerless like I was in the dream. Yeah, and show who who's dominance in the worst way possible, but okay. Get the fuck out of my house, bitch! Malik growled at me, walking right up to me and leaning close to my face. I glared back, feeling my courage skyrocket. Since when does a little stain like you give orders to a guy who can rip your pretty little head from your body? Oh, you wanna try it out, bitch? You wanna try it out? Oh, I'm very curious to see you try it. You really don't don't think, do you? If you kill me, you'd be hunted down by more than just the police, dumbass. You little. What? 
All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back, forced me to cry out and stare at Malix. His eyes bored into mine as he cackled in my face. Hey! Let her go! Sam! Eric! For the mere se second, Sam had punched Malix square in the jaw, forcing him to let go of my hair. As I fumbled back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malix and back in their group. <sighs> Come on, Sam! You and me! Right here! Let's go! Come on, asswipe! However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a gr firm grip on Malix's shoulder. That's enough, Malix. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? I stared at the girls as this girl spoke down to Al Malix. She looked the same, just like pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malix. Or for me. There's five of them, and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. Then... We shoot everyone! Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. <sighs> the two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would glow from under their teeth. Melk grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his fingers like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> then, Melk turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Yeah. Whew. Why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. Should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up and rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps Malix left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? So now there's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed, and I happened to land in the middle of it all. Woohoo! So, what do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. Yeah, protected. <laughs> I'm sure that that went so well in the pre previous lives, but whatever. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. Yay. I couldn't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprises and this one took the cake in being the most surprising. I felt my head spin once again. Huh, what did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <laughs> kick his ass right now until then we'll protect you as much as we can if Malix comes back we'll be here for you uh, what about going outside won't he like we said you have a protection spell on you even if Malix attacks you he won't be able to use his magic on you he'd be just like any other human you can fight back against didn't you say you knew Taekwondo uh maybe well yeah maybe I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malik's. Still, I cannot help but feel very nervous and apprehensive about the future. 
The boys were safe here to train and become stronger. But what if Malix did the same? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. Eh, we could probably leave it alone this time around, but... At least I don't recall ever having to, need to discover the magic thing in Andrew's route. I don't think so. Or any of uh, the future routes, except for Diana's. That's gonna be a little bit different. But until then, we don't- yeah. Mika, shut up, you don't know shit. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words of the Incubi, I felt like a target to something I'd never be able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this all even happen? Should I really meddle with the situation? And you're only staying until after they defeat Malix. That's right. They said they'd only stay until after they defeated Malix. After that, my life could go back to normal. Temporary insanity, as Kate would say. The question was then, would I want them to leave? Yes. Yes, we do. If my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. I get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to. Hmm. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Alright, enough. Let's just sleep and deal with tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me awake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m. Why am I up so early? I fell back into the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to be even alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Uh, let's see. There should be an option here, shouldn't there? Oh dear. Explore the house. Is that what we should do? Ah, oh, fuck. I should have looked this up before I did anything, so that way I knew I was on the right track. Alright, I'm paranoid, so give me one second. I'm gonna give it a quick pause. Yeah, see right there. Quick pause and uh, come back to you when I know what to do. So I'm paranoid. I'm paranoid about everything. Okay, so I just looked it up, and it looks like the next couple of choices don't matter as well, because... Yeah! <laughs> So many choices just don't matter in this in Andrew's route. I think that's also another thing I kind of hate about Andrew's route. Nothing you do matters! Yeah! Let's make some fucking coffee. I decided making coffee was the best, my best bet in surviving the rest of the day. Why not? I haven't had coffee in forever. I got out of bed and made my way to the kitchen. I'm concerned that I was in pajama pants and a tank top. I rummaged through the cabinets for a coffee machine and any makings for coffee. I'm sure that my grandfather had some. I mean, he's old. Old people drink coffee, right? A French press? Well, it's better than nothing. As I began to make my coffee, I checked my email and text on my phone. No new, new important emails, no text messages. I sighed. I quickly made my cup just how I liked it and sat on the counter. Then I began to wonder, will this happen every day? I let the question linger in my mind. For a whole morning, I did not think at once about the boys or Maliks. Everything was peaceful. Everything was average. Nothing magical or dangerous or unusual. I simply drank my coffee as I let the thought marinate in the back of my mind. I returned to the bed, feeling the way of the morning dragged me under my covers to try sleeping again. I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday and nothing was happening today. Come on, eyes. Back to bed. Back to sleep. Okay, it's not really your eyes, it's your brain. You gotta tell your brain to shut off for a second. But not permanently, only temporary. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone and checked the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I had slept for much longer. 
Why is time going so slowly? I need to do something with my life! I sighed. Got changed into normal clothes and went out in the main hall and sat on the stairs. Sundays were very, very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all five of the boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle of the other four surrounding him and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Don't disturb them. Leave them alone. God, me, God, God. I just watched. The boys were very much in their own world, focusing on the training they were all in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry, and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, so lunch was a must. I might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I decided to make some fucking sandwiches. Cause why the fuck not? I assembled simple ham sandwiches for all of us. After I poured some potato chips on the side of each sandwich, I felt satisfied. I said lunch had to be cooked. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time we brought the final dish out. I carried that dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to just leave them be and take the food in my hand to my room to eat. Maybe we could go out today while the boys focus on training. Alright, so in the past with the incubi uh, in the house, we'd always find one of them and talk to them and get a little uh, make-out scene with them. But... Again, we're not going to see any of the incubi, so this is not relevant anymore. So we're going to go to our room and eat. Fuck you guys. Leave me alone. I got, I got problems I got to deal with. Mental problems, health problems, you, you, you name it. I got everything. I got to deal with it, man. Just just leave me alone. Just leave me all alone. <laughs> Alright, this is getting too depressing for my taste. So... <clears throat> anyway. I decided against bothering them. They knew where the food was, so I went to my room instead and ate alone in my room. It's not my problem. I turned on my computer and started to jam to music as I ate my food. As I ate, I began to think about going out. There were so many places to go. Things to do. Alright, so. Uh, I think... No, I, I better not say. Cause I was about to say, I think the father, grandfather's grave is not there if you don't go through Andrew's route. I think it's usually Stay in My Room, The Arcade, or The Pink Lady Cafe. Which we'll be exploring through uh, Naomi and Suzu's route. I believe, anyway. I'm pretty sure that we have to go through these anyway. But since this is Andrew's route, we will be visiting, visiting the grandfather's grave. But again, I'm not too sure if this pops up with his route only or not. I would have to double check with the other routes, which we'll explore eventually. It was Sunday, and I felt the need to see my grandfather. It had been three days since he'd been buried to the cemetery. And the cemetery was only a short walk away. I decided to see him. I took my time eating and headed out to the street to walk towards the cemetery. It was a good half hour walk, but it would be a nice stroll. A flower shop was on the way so I could pick up flowers for his grave. I still felt the sting of grief run through my bones. I knew that it would be eventually fade over time. I paused my journey to the cemetery to enter the flower shop, quickly picking a bouquet from the back display case and paying. Bouquet of lilies, please. Thank you. With flowers in hand, I made my way to the large steel gates of St. Joseph's Cemetery. I entered and felt the cold shiver of death run through the air against my skin. Would it always be like this? The cemetery was a final resting place. It wasn't just for mourning or sadness. It was, a, it was supposed to also be a place for remembrance. I sighed as I walked through the cemetery towards my grandfather's grave. Before I could reach it, though, I noticed a figure standing by the slab. Huh? Who's that? I stopped walking and tried to focus my sight to see who was standing at my grandfather's grave before I approached. I didn't want to interrupt a prayer or anything, but even more, I wanted to know who exactly was there. My mind barely considered the idea that it was my father, but it couldn't have been him. Familiar brown hair crowned his person's head instead of black and gray my father had. He was... vaguely familiar. Andrew? It was indeed Andrew. He was dressed in casual clothes, but he but he was giving his respect to my grandfather. I was curious as to why. I quietly stepped closer and approached Andrew and the grave, being careful not to scare Andrew. 
at my footsteps, Andrew turned bleh, Andrew turned to see me, and realizing it was me, turned fully to me. Oh, Miss Anderson. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll just... Boy, that shirt ain't tucked in all the way. I see it. I won't leave it halfway tucked in. Ugh, what are you, a slob? Get out of here, dude. Leave it fully untucked or tuck it in. Don't do halfway. Don't be a half-assed bitch. Andrew quickly shook his head and took a step to leave. Uh, let's see. Oh, we could say thank you, tell him to piss off, or we could say, you're fine, Andrew. Don't worry about it. Uh, of course, the guy is telling me to say, you're fine, Andrew. I really should have looked this up so I wouldn't have to look at the guy like I, like I did for the others, but... Again, I guess that shows how much I just don't care for Andrew's route. <laughs> oh, jeez. I stopped him with a hand and a smile. He was merely paying his his respects. There was no need for me to intrude. Andrew stared at me before smiling and nodding, returning to his place in front of the grave. He took a side step to make room for me, so I stepped next to him. I looked to the grave, running my gaze through the engraving in the stone slab before I gently laying my bouquet down by it. However, I, I didn't stand back up. I gently sat down on the grass in front of the grave and stared at it. Lilies? Common flowers for gravestones, yeah. My grandfather didn't have a favorite flower. I heard and felt Andrew gently crouch down and sit beside me. I turned my head to look at him, catching him nodding in acknowledgement to my statement. I turned back to the grave, letting out a small sigh. So, can I ask why you came here? I came to pay my respects. He was someone I really idolized. I turned my head to him again, confused. Idolized? Mm-hmm. He inspired me to work hard and make people happy. When I interned for his company, he was the first person to greet me at the doors with open arms, even before my father. Wow. I almost couldn't believe what I was hearing. However, the look in Andrew's eyes made my heart break. He truly idolized my grandfather like he was his own grandfather. Your grandfather was an amazing man, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. He treated me better than my dad ever could. All my dad cares about is me becoming the CEO. But Harold Anderson? No. I could practically feel my lips move and sync with Andrew's as he continued to speak, almost hearing my grandfather speak alongside him in the ear. He said, don't worry about it so much. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy instead. Damn it, grandfather. <laughs> Saying the exact same shit to other people, too! Ah! Oh, oh. It hurts, man! It hurts! He said that to me, too. Andrew turned to me in surprise before smiling. Really? He cared a lot about you. There were days that he wouldn't stop talking about you and compared you to me. I felt a blush run across my face. What things did he say? Well, he told me how cute you were and how you loved to make people happy. He also said you always had the perfect ideas for his toys. I felt a smile grow on my face, remembering the small moment when I had helped him design his now most popular toy, the glowing heart bear. I didn't realize how proud of me he was because I was so small, but now that I was older, I was able to understand. He always had me help him, even when I didn't feel like I could. He was the greatest person ever in my life. He treated, he treated me better than my dad did. How does your dad treat you? He's pretty harsh to me. He wants me to be the CEO of the company as well, since it's technically a family business. Ah, he's strict, like my dad. Well, if it ever came to a time where the board had to decide a CEO, I'd gladly give it up for you. I couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Didn't he want the position? Why? Don't you want to be the CEO? To my surprise, Andrew shook his head with a goofy smile. I don't. My dad wants me to take over the Anderson Company, but I really am not sure if I want to or not. Sure, making toys is great and helping people is something I want to do, but I don't know if I want to head the company. You're not sure you, you, what you want to do? Just like me. You don't want to be a CEO either? I shook my head. Andrew let out a small laugh. Man, we must be the worst kids on the planet. Our dads want us to take over a company, but we don't even want to. 
Imagine what would happen if they actually liked each other. <laughs> oh man, all hell would break loose, that's for sure. Fuck, man. Don't even, don't even utter that shit ever again, dude. That's just horrifying. I couldn't help but laugh with him. We were in the same boat, yet we were on opposing sides. It was like Romeo versus Juliet. Two families competing for one goal, but the competitors didn't want to tr even try to, to reach that goal. Andrew gently stopped laughing and smiled at me. Your grandfather was right about one thing, though. You are really cute. N-no-noni? The blush that had faded from my cheek face suddenly returned as at his words. I looked away from him, making him laugh again. Sorry, it's true. Cross my heart. Thanks. He was flattering me. I had to admit, he was cute too, but I had only known him a short while. It wasn't realistic to like him more than that. Andrew cleared his throat and sat up straight, rubbing the back of his neck. I'll let you have some time with your grandfather. I don't have anywhere to be, so I'll wait by the gates and give you a ride home when you're done. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. It was very sweet of him to wait for me, so I accepted his ride home. Andrew smiled before heading back to the gates. I remained with my grandfather. What I've noticed so far is that he doesn't have a heartbeat or anything that indicates that you're on his side and it's like you're glow a glowing thing and it's like popping. Like Naomi and Suzu don't have necessarily hearts, but they do have different icons, but it's like their own icon. But it's again still their own thing. You could tell if you're doing the right decision or not to please them or woo them and such. Andrew does not have one for some reason. That's a little weird. I am following this guy directly, so I was just like, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. <sighs> I'm sure you're laughing where you are, Grandpa. I practically glared at the grave, but after a brief second, I smiled. He's a sweet guy, and he's a big fan of yours. Why wouldn't it be? You cared for everyone, no matter who they were. I gently ran a finger over one of the lilies in the bouquet. It was soft to touch, but my mind was filled with Andrew for some reason. Was this grandfather's plan? Did he hope for me to meet Andrew as a kindred spirit? I wouldn't be surprised. I chuckled softly before standing. I'll be fine, Grandpa. Andrew's a good guy, but... Hey, who knows? I tried before letting out a sigh and turning back to the cemetery gate where Andrew waited, me waited for me. Andrew led me to his car and drove me home. I went to my room and remained there until dinner. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Since I made them fucking lunch, they're making fucking dinner. Anyway. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They most likely had already eaten, but still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed at that night. I felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I, fe I felt good. I drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly that next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I got that much good sleep? Woo! I looked at my alarm clock. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Oh hey! It must be my lucky day! Woo! Fuck that alarm. Turn that shit off and never turn it back on. God, I hate alarm clocks. They drive me nuts. Karma owed me some luck. After all, I had gone through the, in merely a handful of days. I deserved to get some good luck. Aesthetic for the day ahead, I turned off my alarms before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Huh? Who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. I think it's funny that Mika is a rich girl and yet she doesn't have a car. Her friends have a car and she carpools with them. I think that's always just so funny. I don't know. I can't remember if I ever mentioned that, but I do think it's kind of funny that the rich girl does not have a car. Daddy did not buy this rich girl a car for her 16th birthday. He did not. He's like, fuck no, you get in your own car, bitch. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> and Mika's just like, no, I'm just not gonna waste money on a car, I'm a high school student, I can't, 
I don't have the skills to pay the bills yet, so... <laughs> Why pay for a car? I don't know. I don't know, I'm just being stupid right here. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, back to story time. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet, and I didn't have a car, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. 6.30. Perfect. Perfect? Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before I can before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs to, into the kitchen. I quickly made some, myself coffee and toast, not having time for anything big. I let out a soft sigh in happiness as I sipped my coffee. I felt great. I felt like nothing could stop me today. Come at me, Day. I'm ready for you. I'm ready to kick your motherfucking ass, Day. Oh! I looked to the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Suzu waving me down. I rushed out the door and we headed to school, talking about the homework in the coming day. We made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to and got our important books and necessities. First incident of the day. As I walked towards Suzu and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the opposite side of the wall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. Huh? Oh! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? The three of us looked back to see Lisette and her gaggle of girls. Lisette had a look of complete innocence, while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! I felt a giant fire of anger burning my stomach as I stared at Lisette. Today was not the only time that this has happened to me before. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lisette was the mastermind just from the look on her face. I mean, look at that. Look at that fucking face. She was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. And just for a time constraint, stand up and walk away. No. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I have beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing had happened. Anderson, you okay? That was a pretty bad fall. Yeah, I'm fine. Fall like that is nothing. <laughs> it's child's play, in fact. Ha! Ha ha ha! I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know the pain rushing through my body from that fall. My arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, but I remained content-faced. I quickly gathered up my belongings and nodded to my friends. Come on, we'll be late for history. Suzu and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Naomi and Suzu flanked me as we began to walk to class away from the gaggle of girls. As we walked, I could barely see Suzu flicking the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Good job, Suzu. Good job! Friggin' bunch of Lisette feet lickers. That's gross, Suzu. It's true, though. It's true. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around because we obviously don't have lives. Naomi and I could not help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Suzu's words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Ooh. Suzu stopped. Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Suzu, who was completely red in anger. Suzu slowly turned ahead to the group, glaring daggers at them. The fuck did you just say? I had to act fast. Placed my hand on Suzu's shoulder and quickly and gripped tightly, knowing she was trying to push my hand away. Suzu, they're not worth it. Let's just go, okay? Let's just go. Calm down, man. Calm down. Calm the raging tiger inside of you, my man. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Suzu. I looked at Lisette in a group. Lisette had a wildly amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. Let's go, Suzu. Remain calm. Today's not the day we fight. Maybe next time, but not today. I grabbed Suzu by the shoulder roughly, pulling her back to Naomi and me. Suzu tried to step towards the group, but Naomi held onto her other shoulder. We held onto Suzu, who fought against her, our hands as we marched to class. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another incident. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From Dad? That fucking asshole? Ugh. Oh, what the fuck did that bitch want? I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go when I get there. 
Oh, yay. I get to see my dad again. Yay. Hooray. Quickly head back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Suzu. Hey, are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. I waved goodbye to Naomi and Susan before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. Oh, I need to go to another Rise of Phoenix concert! Eventually, I played the entire album with no one showing up. What the fuck? Dad's never late. Especially not this late. I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected. And I read a signal disconnected connection error message. What the? No signal error? How do I not have signal? What the fuck is going on? I double checked my phone and saw all five bars for signal. Eh, he must be in a dead zup. Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed my at my hands and feet and covered my mouth. I screamed into the hands o hands over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hands, grabbing at my limbs. I felt disgusting and scared. It felt disgusting and scary, feeling their hands on me. I needed it to stop. Hey! Don't dirty up Malix's prey! The voice, which sent a fearful shiver down my spine, whispered into my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. I couldn't fathom what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. I found myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed the interior of a bus or a van. The doors closed off and I was taken unsure of where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. Dun dun dun. Alright, and once again, we will be leaving a nice little save. Right at this location, as per usual. Bam. Kind of surprised at how well that actually timed up with uh, with how long this video took, but hey, I'm okay stopping it right here as per usual for the other videos. But I do thank you all for joining me in today's episode. Uh, we might actually be able to finish Andrew's route next time. Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, I might actually do a test run real quick and see how the rest of the routes go, or the questionnaire goes, and see how long it takes. But till then, I thank you all for joining me in today's episode, as I am Terry the Fox, you are the viewer, and of course, I hope to see you next time. <laughs>